either we have a terrible understanding of what happens inside a large language model, which is partly true, or our obsessive nature to go after benchmarks are going to hurt us in the long term. But either way, there is a new paper. This is definitely not a rant. I don't want to have this video as rant, but I have some strong opinions about this particular paper and what I feel as a problem in pursuit of benchmarks. First of all, this paper is called Tiny GSM. The paper says it is achieving greater than 80% on GSM 8K, which is a benchmark data set with small language models. I know Microsoft is obsessed with this word called SLM and um, I saw Satya Nadella talking a couple of times about SLM on different occasions and they recently released Phi model, which I've still not yet covered. So Microsoft is obsessed with this word or the term called SLM. I don't know, for some reason they want to call it SLM, not like small large language model. Maybe they found it oxymoronish, but this is a paper from Carnegie Mellon University and Microsoft Research. So if you see this paper, tiny GSM is basically one data set that they have launched. It's a synthetic data set of 12.3 million grade school math problems paired with Python solutions, which is a good thing. So what a BARD is doing, what a lot of models are doing is whenever you present a math problem to them, they don't want to use large language models to solve the problem. Rather, they want to use Python to solve the problem. So kind of a good thing, like maybe this is not general intelligence, this is not ASI, this is not AGI, but it will work. It will help in creating a better tutor, um, a lot of other cases. So what this paper is primarily contributing is one, the paper is contributing this new data set, TinyGSM, and then the paper is contributing with the new model, which is a 1.3 billion text generation model, along with something that they are calling as a 1.3 billion verifier model. So with the verifier model, when they couple it with the verifier model, they are going to achieve 81.5% accuracy. I mean, just see, they're going to achieve 81.5% accuracy while you can see the top line GPT-4 using Python itself is this. So what they're saying is that this is the gap between a 1.5 million dollars, I was going to say million dollars, 1.5 million parameter model coupled with a 1.5 million verifier model and GPT-4 with Python. I honestly want to believe this. I honestly have good faith that this might be a really good model, but I don't know. Um, so the immediate next thing that I did is I was searching for if there is anything related to contamination. So I was like, okay, fine. The numbers look absurd or numbers look amazing which is kind of absurd in my algorithm and um, in my like mental algorithm. So I wanted to see like if there is anything contamination. So rightfully they have a section called contamination text. While we never use the GSM 8K test set during training, which I highly appreciate. When you build a model, you are absolutely not supposed to train the model using the test set of a benchmark. Please do not, do not, do not ever do that. Tiny GSM consists entirely of synthetic data generated by GPT models. Okay. So the way things work is you go to GPT 3.5 turbo and you send a prompt, you get the response and uh, you tell the model to also give you a Python code. So this way you will have the prompt, you will have the math problem in itself and you will have the math solution. So this is how synthetic data is generated, which may be contaminated since GPT 3.5 turbo may have been exposed to the training set, sorry, test set during its own training, which would have led to some synthetic samples being replicating part of the test set. Let me repeat it again. So one, they did not use GSM 8K test data for their own model training, but what they're saying is because they use GPT 3.5 turbo, which might have got exposed to the test set of GSM 8K during its own training, which might have resulted in some synthetic samples that they might have used in the training of this new model that they are proposing, they decided to like check this. So they wanted to prevent contamination, like very good researchers do that. So we decontaminate tiny GSM by checking for n-gram matches. My first problem starts with here. If you want to decontaminate something, I know, I know this, this is also an established, you know, technique, like for you to decontaminate. But if you are going to use only n grams, and in this case, they're using n is equal to 30 to actually figure out uh, whether the text was an exact match or not. 
and uh, the problem first of all starts here like um even though this is a good paper i like their teacher student kind of an approach which we'll soon discuss like i'm not completely going to be ranting about this paper even though that's what i'm doing it since i started the video so they're using an n equal to 30 n gram so if you are not familiar with n gram so for example if you take this text uh, while we never use the gsm 8k one gram would be you split everything into while comma v comma never use v gsm 8k by gram or two grams would be while we we never never use use they the gsm 8k so like this they are using n is equal to 30 to do the match um they remove the punch punctuations numbers before computing and matching out of 11 million unique synthetic questions 22 questions have a non-zero 13 gram match with the test so it's a very small percentage like if you see so it's just like 0.35 percent of full set that might make me give them a benefit of doubt but i strongly believe having a 13 gram match is definitely not the right approach which the researchers also agree here one alternative is to check the embedding similarity through our clustering results on uh, code gen embedding suggests that the embedding mostly reflects semantic topics rather than the structural functional similarity making it unfit for checking similarity in the math to our knowledge state of the papers on training set contamination only test for exact matching and checking for contamination beyond exact matching remains an open problem i know this is an open problem but i strongly have my own reservations when you use a large language model like gpt 3.5 turbo to generate a text that might have had knowledge about the benchmark on which you are going to test this uh, i have reservations um i'm going to stop the ranting here and actually get into how good this model is like i want to really appreciate this model so what is this model doing this model is uh, doing two main things like i said like one it is introducing the data set tiny gsm second it is introducing a teacher student kind of a model so it it it, up, it gives you a text generation model and it gives you a verifier model and that verifier model actually increases the efficacy of whatever this is being generated so first tiny gsm is a synthetic data set and uh, when they train or fine tuned 5 1.5 1.3 billion parameter model not the 52 just remember not the 52 when before they used verifiers uh, the tiny gsm fine tuned phi model uh, accuracy improved from 44% to 68% which uh, technically tells me that something is going on but anyways like as i said i have the benefit of doubt i want to appreciate the effort so notably our smallest model 125 million parameter model can also achieve 63.1 so what you want me to believe is this is gpt4 this is 125 million parameter and this is the difference i know the difference is like 40 percent maybe like a huge number but i just want to leave you there that, that is a difference now the next thing is they are actually demonstrating that verifiers as a concept can be a huge um, improvement for the small scale or SLMs, what Microsoft loves calling it, SLMs. So rather than taking every single output from the large language model that it generates, you use a verifier model that would handpick what the best output would be, and then it gives you. So this is like reversing of RLHF, like uh, typically what you do in RLHF, but instead of that, you have this model that would pick the right, uh, right uh, output, and then you get the output, and then that will do. And they have said that while scaling up the 125 million generator to a 1.3 million generator. So taking a model from 125 million parameters to 1.3 billion. So this is like 10 times increase gave only 5% increase in performance while scaling up the verifier from 125 million parameters to 1.3 led to 7%. So you can see the difference, right? So the difference one is the generator model. Second one is a verifier model. This seems like a good difference. Now I'm going to get back into the rant mode. The rant mode is because how is the verifier model built here? Like even though I love the concept of verifier models, I love the concept of teacher model and student model. How is the verifier built? To our surprise, in the case of GSM 8K, that is a that is a benchmark against which like all these metrics are being measured against. We are able to bridge the performance gap between the student and the teacher by utilizing a tiny amount of labeled real data. Where is it real data coming from? The real data is coming from the original GSM 8K training set of seven questions, sorry, 7,000 questions. So they took 
सेवन थाउजेंड क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम जी एस एम एट के ट्रेनिंग सेट नाउ इन देर डिफरेंस दे कैन से दे डिड नॉट यूज द टेस्ट डेटा विच आई रियली अप्रिशिएट बट दे यूज जी एस एम एट के ट्रेनिंग सेट सेवन थाउजेंड क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस एंड ट्रेन एन इंडिपेंडेंट वेरीफायर मॉडल इंडिपेंडेंट हाउ इंडिपेंडेंट इट इज ओके एट टेस्ट टाइम द वेरीफायर स्कोर एंड स्कोर द रेस्पॉन्सेज सेलेक्ट अमंग मल्टीपल कैंडिडेट आंसर्स जेनरेटेड फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट मॉडल देन वी आउटपुट द हाइस्ट स्कोर जेनरेशन एज द फाइनल सबमिशन सो while this approach is really good like i strongly believe that you need to have this kind of multiple layers to get a really good things out of this model once again i have my reservations about how this model uses a verifier model from the benchmark data set while it is even training data set so overall i want to stop this video here um, i appreciate tiny gsm data i appreciate microsoft research i appreciate carnegie mellon university and maybe this is a really good model like maybe this is a model that would help us build multiple smaller models that can run on edge devices even smaller villages in india that could teach young kids how to do math that is all good um, you can probably have like a teacher augmented model rather than having a teacher always uh, correcting students answer sheets uh, you can have this kind of model validating teachers i think these kind of models would be really good at these kind of tasks which i do not disagree at all but i'm just like generally trying to think at this point that what is that we are trying to do if we want to advance large language models are we trying to build more and more models just to hit the leaderboard um are we trying to innovate new solutions approaches new methodologies i i, I don't know like i think i'm i'm losing track of what is happening in this space while i'm very happy with the smaller models while i'm very happy with the approaches that they've done i'm not i'm not able to come terms with how they have taken um, a data set how they have uh, gone like deep into having like a synthetic data set for math and uh, which might have had some kind of gsm 8k data and then they have validated it i would have absolutely loved this much more had they have used a different benchmark totally something like i think the recently one thing that is popping up is like the hungary math result or hungary high school result so you could have used some data set that has not been exposed to this let's say gpt 3.5 gpt 4 and they could have verified it um, i don't know i i feel like something is not 100% good about this but i also strongly appreciate the kind of efforts that have gone into this in building a small large model or small scale large model that can probably have its own computational advantages like they've rightly pointed it out i would absolutely love to see one day like there is a small village in india where there is a teacher but the teacher cannot correct all the papers because always the teacher to student ratio is absurd but the teacher can use these kind of smaller models from their smartphone to help these students like i would love that future but um, is this what is going to take us to the future i don't know let me know in the comments i hope this bit of rant and uh, also the video was helpful to you i'll link the paper in the youtube description for you to read happy prompting